Hey guys, this is Hunt for Games. Since the release of Steam Streaming last year, my understanding of how and where I can play full-fledged PC games has been completely changed around. Any room in the house is now a feasible option, no matter where my PC may be located. And with the Steam Link and Steam Boxes first being distributed in the next couple of months, this will be more true than ever. That doesn't mean it's always perfect out of the box, however. As with anything based around networks, tweaks and small changes can mean big performance gains when it comes to quality and stability. With that in mind, here are my five big tips for improving Steam in-home streaming. Feel free to click on the annotations below to skip to any tips later in the video. So big tip number one, the network. Uh, this should come as no surprise to anybody, but the main PC really should be connected directly to the router via Ethernet. If you can't manage this, I'm not saying you won't be able to stream, but it will affect your stability significantly. One side of the stream realistically should be hardlined for the best experience, and if this side can be the host PC, it will improve your streaming stability dramatically. This goes for the client device as well, but most of the time this won't be possible. Obviously you want to stream devices away from your computer, that's the whole point. If your main PC is plugged into the router, your laptop or tablet or whatever will most likely be in another room or on another floor entirely. So we've got two options here. First and foremost, I recommend you invest in a high quality router, preferably with 5 GHz as an option. Obviously this is only if you plan to stream often, but a high quality router made all the difference for me in terms of streaming performance. It was a terrible experience before, and now it's buttery smooth, 60fps, 1080p in any room of the house. This is on 5GHz of course, and for multiple reasons 5GHz is more stable. I'm no network expert, but mostly this is due to the higher amount of transmittable data over 5GHz, and more importantly lack of other devices interfering with the frequency. Honestly, a great router will benefit you in other ways as well, besides gaming. It can really help improve the stability of your home network for any kind of internet usage, be it browsing, YouTube videos, Netflix, or gaming. With the amount of time we all spend on the internet, I honestly think it could be one of the best investments for your home. But another option if you're avoiding wireless for any reason would be a power line adapter. These adapters plug into any wall outlet and sync with another adapter at an outlet somewhere else on the circuit, and can have an ethernet cable plugged into them. While these can be effective, they're highly dependent on the wiring configuration in your house, and can be unstable. I myself get huge lag spikes that last for like 30 seconds or more when I use them, making them essentially useless for steam streaming. Some swear by them though, with more knowledge of my in-house electrical wiring, I may have been able to put them to better use. These usually cost somewhere around $50 for a pair. Leave in the comments tips you have on improving network stability for streaming, and any ideas you might have for getting a hardline connection to both devices at opposite ends of the house. I'm always looking for a new way to do it. Tip number two, uh, unfortunately one of the better ways to improve stability is to lower the video quality, but there's a couple ways we can go about this. The first is the easiest and it's within the Steam app itself. You can go into in-home streaming options under client options and choose fast, balanced, or beautiful. Beautiful is obviously the best looking but requires the most data to maintain stability. Balanced is usually pretty good for everybody's standard needs and honestly I've only ever used fast when I was trying to stream remotely out of my own apartment. While overall data transfer does drop, the image quality also suffers significantly. You can also go into advanced client options and limit your desktop resolution to 1080p, 720p, or 480p. Uh, while desktop resolution is available, I've only ever seen it successful over a direct hardline connection on both ends. 1080p usually is as high as anyone can or would want to go. The third and final option for decreasing your video quality to improve stability and performance would be to decrease your frame rate. Uh, unfortunately, this option is no longer available directly in Steam uh, like it was in one of the earlier beta client options. But luckily it's still kind of hidden behind the scenes, and using a little console command prompt we can get the frame rate to be limited for the stream. I've included the command prompt below as well as the short instructions on how to apply it to any shortcut on your desktop. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to create a couple different shortcuts for different you know, scenarios such as like bedroom frame rate, uh, living room frame rate, and you know, downstairs right next to your computer frame rate. You can also specify specific bit rates here, which can be useful if your network can handle say 8,000 kilobytes per second, but not the 10,000 which is the next highest option up from 5. Usually auto bit rate will suffice though. Also just as a note, remember to disable any power save functions on your client device. While this usually won't matter, some power save options can turn down the strength of the Wi-Fi radio, or decrease power to aspects of computing such as hardware or software decoding, which would directly impact your stream. Which leads us to tip number three, uh, beef up your main PC. Streaming technology has been significantly improved in the past few years, and more recent graphics cards offer various solutions to improve this. Most notably, NVIDIA included hardware changes in their GTX 650 and above cards to allow faster hardware encoding on the GPU itself. 
As far as I know, hardware encoding on a GPU older than that would either defer to the CPU if the CPU is capable of hardware encoding, or fail entirely. Software encoding is historically prettier, but less stable. Due to the fact that your CPU is most likely helping to run your game, if it has to encode the image while it's doing that on the software level, that's going to take up resources and cause a big hit to your FPS or a delay in the image encoding, either of which would decrease your overall stream quality. I don't mean to say that the only way to have a good experience is to throw money at it, but if you're really interested in the technology, newer hardware can really improve Steam streaming overall. In 2014, AMD offered up their own hardware encoding solution, and it should work on higher end cards of the 7000 series and up, which I think is the 7700 series or above. Specifications of which cards do or don't work is a little confusing to me, and I haven't owned an AMD card in a long time, so leave in the comments whether or not you have an AMD card and have been streaming successfully, and any tips you might have for AMD streamers. On top of these benefits of having newer hardware, streaming will generally look better if you're already maintaining a high frame rate. The host has more to work with when passing data and can send a more evenly distributed number of frames. To counter this though, I would avoid dual graphics card situations. I've spent the last 4-6 to six months with a 970 SLI system and can honestly say if you intend to stream regularly you should avoid it. Some games will work great, some won't, and some won't work at all. After finally disabling one of the graphics cards to test some Steam streaming, I found that all of the issues I've been seeing previously, including stuttering, black strobing, or games not starting altogether, went away. While this is driver dependent, that's sort of the whole problem with SLI, is that most games are driver dependent. So tip number four, uh, if you can, decrease other traffic on your network. This includes YouTube videos, Netflix, or general browsing, although that one usually is okay. If someone's downloading a full Steam library on your network while you're trying to stream, you're going to see an impact on most network configurations. If you've got a few roommates all doing their own thing, beware that on a wireless or even wired configurations, you might see hiccups or general decrease in quality of your stream. So kick their asses out and get back to streaming. Higher end routers like I mentioned before will help with this, but won't necessarily resolve it entirely. More traffic on the network will always compete with your stream. Advanced options like quality of service and, uh, you know, putting your IP above others as far as priority are always out there, although I've never really gotten them to work regularly um, for Steam streaming. If anybody has any suggestions for how to improve those situations where you know your network is under heavy use with other people using the internet and then you're trying to Steam stream, uh, please leave them in the comments to let me know. I've always, you know, looking for a way to improve that experience. Which brings us to our last tip. If you were determined to stream on a 2.4 GHz network, which is usual standard Wi-Fi, and understand the stability risks within, at least do yourself a favor and try to move some other 2.4 GHz devices out of the way. This includes obviously anything running on a Wi-Fi network, including your phone, or like another tablet, or whatever. But also Bluetooth devices, which people often forget. Bluetooth keyboards, mice, gamepads, or speakers could all interfere with your network stability on the client device because they're using the same 2.4 GHz frequency. This can be doubly annoying when your Bluetooth gamepad was the one you wanted to play with, but again, this is why 5 GHz routers can be so helpful. Anyways, I hope these tips were helpful. Uh, Steam boxes are right around the corner, so I have a feeling more and more people will be checking out home in-home streaming soon. Let me know in the comments if any of these tips helped you out or if you have any tips for me. I'm always trying to improve stability so I can play games while doing anything in the house. Uh, like the video if you liked it, and please subscribe for more tips. I've got the Steam Link pre-ordered coming next month, so I'll definitely do an unboxing and a review of that and the Steam controller coming with it. Uh, check back in October, so uh, thanks for watching.